Well, here we go. We're trying it again this morning. We may be live. We're good? How do we know? Okay, so good morning and uh, welcome. Happy Mother's Day. And we're just trying to fine tune it a little bit to start when it should start and stop when rather than cut off a prayer. So we're actually testing. And so uh, anyway, uh, let me say happy Mother's Day. Let me speak to the mothers just for a second. Like, I don't know if you noticed yesterday or not, but like we opened Omardware for you for Mother's Day. Like we did like stuff like Old Depot was open for Mother's Day. I think we may have made some mistakes, like, right? Like we pro we probably should have opened up like LC Air, right? And got it rolling for you guys rather than like Canadian Tire. Like we got it rolling for you, right? So, but anyway, Happy Mother's Day. Hopefully, we can find something at one of them stores. And from my perspective, they're great stores. From your perspective, I'm not sure that's what you were looking for. But anyway, happy Mother's Day to you. Let me uh, also start this morning before the team comes. And I want to speak at least to the church just for a minute. And because uh, I, I believe that sometimes the church needs to hear the voice maybe of the shepherd. I'm not feeling that this is a great thing uh, of what is going on. And believe me, I am attempting everything I can to follow the rules and to social distance. But I'm telling you, for the church, it's built on gathering. It's built on touch and just the reality of connecting with other believers. And so I just want to say this morning, to encourage you, listen, read your Bibles, do your devotions, trust God, push harder, dig deeper, uh, because I'm telling you, now this is not an insult, so you know, but the Bible calls the believer, or followers of Christ, sheep. And what I know about sheep is we tend to, our tendency is to go astray. And as your leader this morning, I want to encourage you to tell you that I'm an evangelist. So everything that's going on and, and all the great things that everybody's saying that's happening because we can reach out and, and touch people, I want you to know that that's probably not happened. I probably would say, too, that I'm not sure that this is a, like a move of God. I don't hear the right language for that. Like stuff like repentance and forgiveness and transformation and desire. And so my heart then moved back to great concern for the body of believers. And so this morning, if you know God and you're trusting God and you're not able to meet, listen, I'd encourage you to... Log in online, or if you can't do that, and, or somehow, or you know friends that can't, listen, call them, connect with them with the Bible, encourage them, and speak life into their life. Listen, if I were you, this is what I would do also. I would gather your family today, 10 o'clock. I wouldn't watch the video later. That's, that's my opinion. I would not watch the video later. Don't make it a time that you're just recording that's not what we need to do. It is so important that we attend church. It really is. I think it's vitally important. And so I'd encourage you to gather around the TV. If you're watching this later in the day, this is just an encouragement to you. Listen, don't just watch it later. Gather with us. That's what the church is about. Believe me, I, I, we see businesses open up, and I'm all for reopening. Right? But I'm telling you that the church is built on gatherings. And it's essential that you get connected with G Jesus 
in a deeper way. So I want to pray for you this morning as we start our service. I'm going to get our team to come, and uh, let's just ask God to be with us today. So, Father, in the name of your Son today, I pray for each and every believer that will watch our service. Lord, even there could be folk that will watch this later. God, bring us back to the hour that we met for church. And help us, Lord, to gather our family. God, this is a difficult time. Listen, our world and our government and those that lead don't understand how vitally important it is for us to gather together. And so, Lord, today I just ask you to be with the people of Seaway and of Cardinal. Be with them, Lord. Be with anybody now that have started to follow and show them the importance of what you said about your church. God, this is your idea, and we honor you today. And so, Lord, our best scenario is not to stream into people's homes. Our best scenario this morning is not to have empty chairs, Lord, but that this place would be full of your people and that we would be celebrating together on Mother's Day. And so, God, just be with us today, I pray. And may, Lord, as we now start to worship, I know you can, Lord. I know that you're willing. But may we be willing to open up our homes to your presence and let it flow free into our lives today. In Christ's name, God bless you as you enjoy some worship together. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we were made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade.
darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on fire and win this nation fire change the atmosphere build your Treasures I believe I'm never enough. But then you came along and pulled me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better. No.
Amen. That's a good song. Praise God. Let me grab some announcements because I'll forget them. And um, let me just um, mention a few things uh, this morning. I don't know if you guys are enjoying uh, the kid bids on uh, Melanie's putting up on Wednesday. Oh, my goodness. I just love them. And uh, I'm so uh, happy for that. I know the youth, and we don't have to announce this stuff, Matt, on the screen, uh, but I know the youth are getting together. I think the other night uh, they played a game, uh, the Escape. What was that called again, uh, Jake or Mel? The Escape game. Escape oh, the Escape Party. And they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff online, and it's amazing. Let me uh, throw up, Matt, if you could throw up announcement. It's the one called announcement. You'll see it come up on your screen. It's got identity and choose joy, and there's another Bible study. Let me just say that um, the identity one, well, can restart. We've got, I think, one person that's really interested. If we can get some more, we would restart that at uh, May the 25th. And uh, I'd encourage you, so what that does is a assessment in the sense of uh, who you are in Christ and some gift tests and all that. So there's a little bit of cost with this one, but I encourage you uh, to be involved in that. Choosing Joy, uh, May the 27th, is going to be a restart. There, I think there's five or six people in that one now, and so um, that one will restart too. Matt, maybe we could throw up the prayer, and listen, if you don't have Zoom yet... Listen, uh, it's announcement number three, Matt. Uh, Thursday is prayer at 10 o'clock. And also Sunday tonight, we will have a prayer meeting. If you need me to send out the link, I'll try to get it to you before uh, 7 uh, tonight. Matt, maybe number five, announcement five. Uh, we're doing Alpha right now Wednesday night. And I think we got seven people. I think there's three or four people right now. Listen, if you are interested, we're doing the basis of Christianity. Let's say that you're interested. Promise you there'll be no pressure. We won't force you. We just lay out the evidence of Christianity. And that's biblical Christianity. We answer questions like, who is Jesus? Why did he die? How can I have faith? I'd encourage you to sign up for Alpha. It's starting this coming Monday night. You send me a message, uh, however you can do that, uh, uh, through Facebook. Leave a little thing in the comment. Do a private message. If you've got my cell, uh, you can do that also. Let me mention Joy, Matt, number six. Let me, uh, look, we had an amazing one. I'm going to say there was 15 of uh, seniors on there including um, Duncan, who's not a senior, just don't, me, I meant to say, sorry. But anyway, uh, listen, we're doing it every two weeks. So if that happened Tuesday, more, Tuesday at 11, it's going to happen not this Tuesday, next Tuesday. So I'd encourage you to get involved in that. Can I throw up the emails too as they're planning to come back and do some? Oh, Melanie's going to come and do a story. Listen, this is the giving emails. So if you, you can do uh, e-transfer right to these two emails, we'd encourage you to do that. There's also PayPal on both websites, but uh, let me encourage you uh, to uh, do that and continue to support your church. And we want to thank you. You have been such a blessing, and we would encourage you to continue to give. I'm going to invite Melanie to come, and she's going to share this morning. Good morning, Seaway and Cardinal kids. Uh, first of all, I want to say a quick happy Mother's Day to all of our moms out there. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, it's a little bittersweet this morning. Like, you know, as moms uh, at the church, like this is always such a big day and the kids are here. And, you know, it's kind of sad that like we're not all here this morning to celebrate. So I feel like some of these services just really get to me in regards to the ones that were not all together. But I do have a story for your kids. So kids, if you are uh, scattered, if you want to come to the living room, um, 
I want to talk about Jesus's mother for a second because Jesus had a mother and she's very, very important. And I'm going to tell kind of a funny story about his mom, but um, Luke 2, 41 to 50, Jesus was 12 years old. So kids, you're about 12 and no, Riley, you are not 12, you are eight. Um, but I know some of you think you're almost there. If you are 12, I want you to think, okay, Jesus was my age when this happened. So imagine if this happened to you. So Jesus and his family, his dad and his mom and a bunch of other relatives travel into Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And Joseph and Mary are there and a lot of relatives and they just, the feast is over and they leave and Mary and Joseph just kind of make this assumption that Jesus is with the relatives, so they all head out. But Jesus decides to linger in the temple. He decides he's not going with his parents, which I feel like you can put your hand up as 12-year-olds. I'm sure you've all done it. Even 8-year-olds and 6-year-olds have decided you don't want to do something. So Jesus decides he's sticking it out. He's staying in the temple. He's not leaving. And they assume that he's with them. So they go off, and then they start looking for Jesus. Like, or, like they're asking all the relatives, like, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Like, I don't understand. And so then they realize he's missing, and it's been three days. So they have to return to Jerusalem. So they return to Jerusalem, and they go to the temple, and sure enough, Jesus is sitting in the temple. And um, I can only imagine, like, Jesus is sitting there listening, and he's asking questions, and listening to what these people have to say. And it says in the Bible that everyone in the temple was amazed by what Jesus was asking and his knowledge. And so, but Mary, like Mary's probably amazed a little bit, but like she's also his mother. So I can only imagine Mary walking up and it says that she goes up to him and these are her exact words, but like doesn't really give much evidence of what her tone was. But as a mom, like missing my kid for three days, I can imagine it's like, what were you thinking? Where were you? Like, I don't understand. Like, we looked everywhere for you. Do you know how worried sick we were? Like, she's freaking out, I'm sure, at Jesus. Because I would be. Like, I lose my kids for 10 seconds, and I'm losing my mind on them. So three days, like, it's probably bad news. So anyways, Jesus, all cool, because we've learned a lot in the last Kids Own videos that Jesus is just cool and chill, and he just answers the way he answers, and I wish I had his response tactics. Anyways, he says, why were you even looking for me? Like, don't you know I was doing my father's business? Like, wh where do you think I was? So what's the story here? Because, you know, it's Mother's Day, and I wanted to tell this story, and uh, like, I really hope your parents have never lost you for three days. That's really one of the things. But also, I just, I want, as kids, I want you to realize that sometimes as parents, especially moms, we make mistakes sometimes. And like, we probably haven't made big of a mistake of losing you for three days but sometimes we make mistakes and so today as you know you spend the day with your mom and you enjoy that time with her I really want you to just realize that moms are humans too and sometimes we don't do it right but I promise you that your mother is doing the best that she can to make sure that you have the best life so give your mom a hug go get a snack I'm gonna say a quick prayer and then we're gonna go into worship so dear Heavenly Father I just want to thank you for all the moms that you have blessed the Seaway and Cardinal kids with, God. I pray blessings over the mothers today, God. I pray that you would just bless them in more ways than they can even imagine today, God, whether it's through this service, whether it's time spent with their kids, God, however you bless them, God, I just pray blessings over these moms. God, I pray for these kids, God, that as they, they grow up under the wings of who you have designed to be their mother, God, that they would understand that we're not perfect as moms, God. And sometimes we make mistakes, God, but as long as we're able to admit them and walk forward, God, we are doing the best that we can, and we love our children more and more than they will ever know. So I just pray blessings over our kids and our moms today as we go into worship. In Jesus' name. I might as well get some brownie points and say happy Mother's Day to my mom and wife.
And spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water where this morning just slip up your hand that will be the evidence that, that you need prayer and I'm not praying to me I'm praying to God the all powerful all present supreme supernatural we're going we're gonna to speak in a moment to Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We're going to talk to the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley and the bright of the morning star. And this morning, our heart's cry is that he will see your hand. And so you might have joined us and... And in the sense of just coming into our service and you don't know God, right now, this second, this very moment would be prime time for you to say yes to Jesus. Would first and foremost you pray with me? Would you pray this prayer? Say, Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. And you are a Savior that met the needs of every sinner to be redeemed. Now listen, let us know. Tell us if you prayed that prayer. Now let's pray for those that are sick. Like, like Coraline, I don't know if you got a chance to watch, but the same presence that's in this room now arrives in your room and there's healing in his presence. 
John, I'm not sure you can watch it at the hospital, but there's healing, Barb. There's healing in Ruby. There is healing in God's presence. Kevin, your back in the name of Jesus can be better because he's present here today. So whatever's going on in your life, it could be physical, it could be mental, it could be some social thing, finances, whatever it is today, and you've landed here. This morning, we declare that God would do a work on your life and that he would touch you. Jake, could you do that song again? Just that some of it. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. So spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water wherever you will call me. And take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior.
thankful today for his presence. I am. I'm so thankful. I th I, listen, I, I want you to know though, honestly, this morning I miss you. I can truly say that this morning because I felt that the presence of God, there's points here this morning. I don't, we don't know if you felt it or not, but I'm telling you there were times this morning in this sanctuary that it was overwhelming, saturating, overcoming, feeling like we are winning in the sense of living for God each and every day. That came into this room today, and I'm so thankful. And I'd encourage you to continue to trust God. Hopefully we can really get this back together soon. Would you continue to pray? Oh. My goodness, church is so important. It is. And it was never meant to be run by five people. It wasn't. That's the truth. It was actually meant to come together as a body. Listen, we've seen more happen in past years at Easter time and now than we've ever seen happen, and especially right now. But still, we are so thankful that you're with us and that you can join us. And so if you have your Bibles... Turn with me to Timothy, 
Okay, so turn to uh, Timothy. Uh, it's chapter 1. And so uh, we're going to look at a text this morning. Sorry, it's the second book of Timothy. Not Timothy 1. It's chapter 1. But it's the second epistle of, uh, of Timothy. And so Matt, if you can prepare to throw up some references. Uh, we'll start out with... Uh, maybe I got verse 2 here but I don't know if I put 2 there so let's start with 3 okay and so uh, I need 2 how could we get 2 well you got your Bibles can you pull that off Matt to get 2 for me because I don't know why I thought it was 3 there this morning it says 2 Timothy are you getting it You're getting close oh he's telling me 1 minute and we got time so 2 Timothy my beloved son. You got it? It's a different slide, but that's okay. We can fix that later. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus our Lord. We'll get to verse 3. I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience the way my forefathers did, as I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. You say, Roger, what did this have to do with Mother's Day? Longing to see you, even as I recall your tears, so that I might be filled with joy. A hey, verse 5, it says, For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother. I like it. Lois, and your mother. I'm going to say Eunice. Blah. And I am sure that it is in you also. Verse 6, for this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. Like, guys, like we should be able to do that. Can somebody let, like, whoever needs to know that, A, one of our essentials is that we lay hands on people. And it's very biblical. And so, but anyway, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of... Timothy? How do you say that? I don't know how to say that word. I can't, that's not one of my words, Luke. Come on, help me out here. You can't see it? Let me get it. When you're timid. Yeah, that's, they, they got that spelled wrong. Okay, when you're timid, so God has not given us the spirit of that, your timidness, okay, right? But to a power, love, and discipline. And so um, let me just say that um, uh, if we don't have it, the Bible verse for you this morning, but if you wanted to look it up, Acts 14 was Paul's first missionary journey. And there is a good possibility because Paul visited the town that Timothy was in that years before Timothy came to the Lord. What he done was he embraced the good news in Acts 14, say, and when Paul revisited a few years later on his second missionary journey, a disciple was there named Timothy, who had already made much process in the Christian life. And uh, he was already starting to speak to people. And so uh, the way that Paul works, he always starts with this like threefold greeting. If you wanted to throw up Matt verse 2 again with that bad slide. But anyway, this threefold greeting, it actually tells of the condition of man. And it also speaks of the great love of God our Father. I mean, if grace is God's kindness to the undeserving and mercy is shown to the weak and the helpless, right, that cannot maybe help themselves, then peace on the other end is reconciliation. It's that restoring of harmony. So God's love as being grace to the worthless Mercy to the helpless and peace to the restless. And so when we look at this, especially this verse, we see that 
the first paragraph with this personal, uh, um, uh, personal like characteristic or uh, personal in the sense that the apostle brings this constant reminder to him. Uh, he says in verse three, if you throw about, I remember you constantly in prayer. I love that. And then in verse 4, if you wanted to, I remember your tears. And so I guess maybe, I don't know if it was Paul's first missionary journey or his second one, whenever it was, Timothy, when he left, must have cried. And they must have been really close. But he remembered his tears. Verse 5, Matt, says, I am reminded or remember your sincere heart. And then back in verse 3, as he was remembering, he said, I thank God for you. And so let's deal with a little bit on Mother's Day today. Okay, because I think the first thing that the apostle does here in these verses, and uh, let me tell Matt which verse it is. It's probably verse 3, Matt, first. Okay, is that the apostle Paul in verse 3 talks about his forefathers, right? And how they influenced his life. Matt, in verse 5, and I know you're jumping around there a lot, but all of a sudden it talks about Timothy's mother and grandmother that impacted Timothy's life. And without a doubt, our parents, and let me speak to the parents right now, because as the shepherd of this congregation and cardinal, I want to say this morning that your kids, regardless of age, whether they're small now or whether they're grown up and you've got grandkids or great-grandkids, I want you to know in the context of our passage this morning, uh, um, Timothy's mother and his grandmother was godly. Now, so you know that these two ladies may have come to God uh, also in Paul's uh, first missionary journey. We do know, according to Acts 16 and verse 1, that Timothy grew up in a sort of uh, family that the father was Greek and an unbeliever, and his mother believed in the Lord, was a Christian Jew. And so, and we also know that Lois got converted, his grandmother, and had this sincere faith. So here we've got three generations. Now, my question this morning is, to all the mothers, not just the parents, is what do we want to leave behind? Right? Because, listen, just like Timothy, we need godly individuals. I think that our parental upbringing is vitally important. Now, you just might be starting today. Well, that's okay. Listen, start living. Start doing what God wants you to do. Be a godly person before anybody and everybody that would be your children or spiritual sons and daughters. I know that in a later, in uh, chapter 3 and, four, and 15, it says that uh, Timothy was taught and was very acquainted with the sacred writings. And so there is a good possibility, even before the conversion experience of his grandmother and his mother, he was taught some of the Old, script, uh, the, the Old Testament, and uh, which is vitally important. I got a little challenge this morning with the Old Testament. Let me tell you that for Roger March, I believe in the Bible, right? And, and so you know that. And so if you've been reading any of my posts, I want you to know that I take the entire account into. I see tons of grace in the Old Testament when it comes to like Nineveh, when it comes to Abraham, when he was about to kill his son for a sacrifice, that a lamb showed up. I mean, there is grace throughout the scriptures, and my God, Father, never, ever changes. And I want you to know that even Paul, who persecuted the church, who killed individuals, for their Christian faith, still had forefathers that really believed in the Lord. So parents, mothers, you're an example of faith. 
Let me encourage you to do that today. I want to talk about friendship for a second. Because after parents, it is our friends who influence us the most. They're our teachers. And Paul called Timothy a friend and a son. And that is so important. He said, Timothy, I remember your tears. I remember you long day and night. I mean, this transparency of verse 4. I'm longing, he said, to see you. That's what he says in verse 4. I recall your tears. Timothy, I'm praying for you. Timothy had a really good friend in the Apostle Paul. And let me encourage you. Whether you're a mom, a dad, a grandmother, a grandfather, you need to get people around you that will influence you for God. And that will love to see you and encourage you, build you up into faith. That's the kind of people that we need. Hey, this is not the final, so you know, and not any least important, just because it showed up at number three. But there's this special gift that was up on Timothy. Paul turns now from not the, the indirect means, and he says, listen, Timothy, you're being shaped by Christian character. But listen, Timothy, that's indirect, directly God himself has placed the gift on you. Let me tell you, Mom, boy, you got a good gift. I like to say Happy Mother's Day, Jake, to my mother too today. I don't know if she'd be watching this. But boy, did I grow up with an awesome mom. I love you, Mom. And you have influenced and impacted my life. And for all the spiritual moms that have been in my life, and some people tell me sometimes, you know, the church have hurt them so bad. Boy, you should call me. I have been hurt many times. But I'm telling you, I got some spiritual people. Remember that, would you? Like we, we focus in maybe sometimes on our struggles with people. Why don't we focus on what they really wanted to invest within our lives? And I am so thankful Boy, Mom, I can remember you spanking me. Uh, I can't. It hurt, Luke. It did. Like, I'm not going to say the weapon that you use. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I'm so thankful for my mom today. But I'm so thankful to my Heavenly Father, who's given me a gift. He placed a gift inside of me. He really did. It is a gift of God. And we must learn that not only is our parents and our friends and our teachers that can impact our life, but God himself made us by calling us separate from the world. I'm telling you, this is what I've learned in the last little while. The gods of this age have blinded people. And, and, and I've been throwing up some warnings on Facebook. J just so you know, that if I saw a blind man walking down the street and he was about to go into a ditch, I would help him and go and try to rescue him from doing that. Well, listen to me. This is my opinion. And this is my belief. And this is what the scripture says. And according to them today, that the gods of this age have blinded the hearts of man. And I'm here to tell you, mothers, fathers, grandparents, grandmothers, I'm here to tell you today that God wants to call you out of the life you're living. And he wants to bring you to a life that's great and awesome and caring and loving. Hey, let me give you the final one before the team comes back. Because the Apostle Paul gave Timothy some instructions. So young people, Tim was just a young man. I want to speak to the young people for a second. And, and the parents, you might be glad for this, but Timothy was just a young man. 
And let me say to the young people that are there today, let me say to the kids that maybe are close to the TV today, God have implanted a gift in you. God have implanted a gift in you. Why don't you right now whisper and say, God, rekindle the fire. Rekindle it, Lord. And that's what the discipline is. It's a personal discipline. It's natural and spiritual. It really is. It's God's gift, and it needs to be developed. It truly do. And so Paul said to Timothy, don't neglect it. Don't neglect what God wants to do. Listen, you might have been watching this this morning, and God's speaking to your heart. It's time to turn from your sins and to me. Don't neglect it anymore. Don't. It's not worth it. Oh, the gift is likened to fire. Oh, man, I like fire. I was talking to Rose yesterday. Rose is a uh, senior lady in Cardinal, and she's not likely going to see this video. I asked her how she was doing. She said, Pastor, I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm staying on track. Come on. Hallelujah. But Rose said to me yesterday, she said, Pastor, she said, we got a, a lot of wood put together behind Cardinal, and we could have a big fire. And I said, Rose, hold off. We might be allowed to get together. But let me speak about the, father, about the fire that's in your soul. God wants to rekindle it. God wants to set it a spark again. Let me, let me tell you about Roger. If I was close to you, like, I would add some, like, gasoline. <laughs> Like something to spark it really, really bow. You know, matter of fact, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit and what it does, it's like dynamite. It, it is. When he comes and fills you to an overflowing, it just ignites and explodes. May the fire that's in you ablaze great again. So people can see that fire that's ablazed. And may you exercise, gift faithfully, and wait on God in prayer, and constantly be renewed so God can do a great work in your life. Can I pray for you this morning? Hey, you guys come on back, and let me pray for you this morning. And so, um, I wish you were here. I do. I'd... Uh, I'd social distance, I promise. And uh, so why don't we ask God to do this? Jake, you start playing. And I want God to settle into your own. Stop everything. What a, what, a, what a prime time to get distracted. Don't do anything. Pull your family close. No, come on. God. I, I'm not. I'm not preaching. I'm not preaching about like, uh, you know, you, you, need, you need to go on a diet. Somebody asked me a few days ago. They said, like, I, I need to lose weight. So I, I, I went into my um, my bathroom and I, I I pulled the scales out. And, and as I'm talking to that person, I'm telling them, Hey, I just put the scales in front of the fridge. And in order to get in the fridge, you got to step on the weight scales. And, and that might help you. And, and I was very kind, so you know. I, I wasn't mean, but, but uh, let, let me say that I'm not talking about that. Like, like we could put on a bit of weight. Right? Maybe I used to always call it winter weight. Maybe we're, this year we're going to put on some summer weight. But that's not important right now. Listen, listen, your health comes second. Your body comes second. What about your spirit? What about your soul? That's vitally important. It truly is. So gather people in. Gather your kids. Their souls are important. Man, we're lacking. We could go astray. We're sheep that could tend to see just, just go off track. Come on. I'm trying to bring us back on track. I, I'm not allowed to have you in this building. But listen, I'm telling you, it is time for us to rekindle the fire that's in us. Don't neglect this for a second. Don't neglect it. So Jesus, touch the people that are watching this word this morning. 
you, God, I'm, I'm not like the clearest guy for preaching. I, I probably like sway off track. And my language, God, like it took me so long to get so little of education. But Jesus this morning, right now, I can see your spirit settling like fog. And the reason that it's like fog, Lord, because it's thick. May it be released. Now touch your people. Touch your people. Touch your people. Jake, would you lead us in a song? Oh 
Father, I just want to thank you, God, for just how much we don't have to be in a building as much as we, we say every week how much we miss this building being full. And God, I'm not taking away from that, God. I miss the people in the seats, God. But God, the anointing that you can pour over your people just as much in their homes on their couch as you can hear, God, is so real. And so, God, I pray this morning as we end this service, God, that you would continue to bless each and every person who is listening, God. God, I pray that your anointing would go forth with them as they turn off their screens and continue on their day and their week, God. God, be with each and every person watching. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't think it would be fair. I hope we're not done, but I want to also do a huge shout out to my mom. Mom, I love you so much, and you are amazing, and I don't mind sharing you with the church because I know that not only do you mother me and Brittany and Brandon, but you mother this church, and you do. You love people just as much as probably Jesus does in this building, so I just want to shout out to you because I love you. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>